Hey everybody, Dustin Meyer here, and yeah, I know it's been a while. <laughs> but uh, a little while ago, Portrait Pro rolled out the new version of uh, version 18, and uh, for a long time I've been using version 17, and they said that some of the major improvements for version 18 was it was faster facial recognition, it was more accurate when it came to finding you know, the skin areas and overall just a lot better performance under the hood. Plus there's a few extra sliders and stuff that I just wanted to check out and go over with. So if you guys are sitting on the fence uh, as to whether or not it's really worth upgrading from 17 to 18, uh, maybe you'll have a better idea of what you wanna do after you take a look at the video. So anyways, enjoy and here we go. Okay, so starting off, just to let you guys know, right now I am in Lightroom CC, and uh, some of you guys may be asking why I decided to use this program. I've been using it for a while, and I just find that it's, uh, over time, as the updates have been rolling out, it just seems to be a little bit smoother for my workflow and stuff. Um, but I can make a whole other video as to why I'm using this instead of Lightroom Classic. So anyways, um, I've got my image for the most part. We're just going to do some standard retouching as far as what we're going to do in um, uh, Portrait Pro 18. So. I always start out in Lightroom CC after I do my general corrections, you know, just color and whatnot. So a little bit cloudy today, but just added just a tad bit of warmth. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it in Photoshop here. So right click edit in Photoshop. And then what it's gonna do over here is it's going to download the original because this is an older image. It was backed up to Adobe Cloud a while back. So what it's doing is it's taking the original image, applying the changes that I've made to it in Lightroom CC. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and open it in Photoshop as a TIFF. So here we are, we're in Photoshop, and what I always do first is look around, just look for anything in here that looks like it needs to be removed from the background. We've got a few stray hairs up here, but for the most part, those are pretty easily uh, remedied here. I'm just gonna use the selection tool. And then what I usually do is just hit Shift Delete, and that's gonna bring up the Content Aware Fill, and then just click OK. And for the most part, it does a decent job but this is just kind of like a quick little fix. Uh, if you're doing like bigger sections and stuff, then you may want to try something like the patch tool or uh, the, the clone stamp tool, whatever. But today what we're really looking for is just going into Portrait Pro and seeing what uh, the improvements are and seeing if it's a lot faster. So uh, what I always do is create a second layer for Portrait Pro. So if you guys have seen my uh, videos in the past, then you'll know that uh, I never uh, wanna edit the original. So with uh, Portrait Pro Studio Max, it comes with a plugin. So uh, for Photoshop and for Lightroom. So I'm gonna go up here to Filter, and then I'm gonna go down to the Anthropics cause that's the name of the company. And we're gonna go over here to Portrait Pro and click OK. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to take this image, say that it's you know, running in the background. It's gonna automatically start looking for, the, uh, looking for the face in the image. And I've said this before, if you find that Portrait Pro is uh, not as accurate when it comes to finding the outlines of the face, you may wanna tweak your sharpening settings in Lightroom because if your image is coming out just a tad bit too soft, then it may give it a little bit harder time. Okay, so here we are, and that was real time. I did not <laughs> shorten the clip length or anything. Uh, that's pretty much how quickly it goes. And uh, so, all right, so here for the outline, as you can see with facial hair, as in the past, it's always had a little bit difficult time, but for the most part, it uh, looks like it's pretty accurate. Um, now over here, what I usually do first is I zoom all the way out because I just want to see how it looks. Seems a little pasty, but that's probably because I uh, had tweaked with the uh, the default <laughs> presets a while back. But um, 
So with face sculpt, we're gonna just leave that alone or just for demonstration purposes, for those of you guys that have not used it before, essentially it can correct for uh, lens uh, correction. You can bring the head forward and stuff, but I mean, we'll just kind of leave it as is. It's also really good if you happen to have clients who, uh, you know, one eye tends to squint more than the other, you can actually come over here and uh, you can widen the eye, uh, just the left or the right, if you want. And then also uh, just everything else here, there's the lens correct, there's uh, bringing the head forward in case they tuck the chin too much. Uh, one of the new features is you can increase the hair volume, which it can kind of be fun. So, but for this guy here, I don't think it's really necessary. Um, but we'll just leave it as is for now. Now with skin smoothing, every client's different. So I usually have my standard, I update my defaults so that um, uh, most of the time I'm gonna have to apply facial shine to remove it. So I already have it cranked up pretty high. I found that if you go all the way up to 100, it will create a very overly soft looking kind of, um, kind of effect to it. So I bring it down somewhere between 95 and 98. We're outside, so we don't have extremely harsh looking light, but um, so we'll bring it down to about 95 or so. And also let's see here, imperfections. Yeah, about halfway or so. Um, for those of you guys who want to see what these different effects do, usually I just crank it, you know, all the way up and then bring it back down. Uh, for younger guys, you know, it's, it's not as big of a deal. Uh, thin wrinkles, uh, probably not so much. Uh, now, a new feature is this remove grease, and this also helps if you've got an uh, overly shiny face. I have found that um, you might wanna be a little careful with this, because what it does is it takes the highlights and then it starts to add a color cast to it to try and match it with the rest of the skin tone. And if you go too heavy with it, then it's going to, um, it's gonna have like a very solid colored blotch where there used to be a highlight. So just keep an eye out for that. Okay, so sharpen. This is something that I feel is super important. Always make sure that you add some sharpening after you've applied all your softening and stuff because otherwise the face just comes out looking way too soft and you start to get kind of like that overly powdered plasticky kind of look. So I usually just make sure I have about, you know, somewhere between 10 to 20 on sharpening, depending on if it's a guy or a girl. Um, and then down here, we do have some spots, you know, originally over here, uh, we have a lot of spots. So I am going to just see the difference if I crank it up all the way to 20. And that definitely helps. Uh, we've got a few spots in here. Let's see, we're gonna go to touch up. Uh, I usually start out with uh, strength at about, you know, 25 or so, cause I don't wanna go full blown. You can use the brackets key to kind of uh, to, to change the shape or the size of the brush. So it's a little bit better. This guy over here, there we go. And then also when it comes to texture, I tend to zero it out because, um, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll bring it way down. It might be a little hard to tell, but the reason why is sometimes I feel like it can come out uh, looking too grainy. So let's see here. As far as spots go, that seems to be pretty good. A lot of these, my general rule of thumb is if it's red, get rid of it. If it's, uh, you know, like brown or blackish colored, then chances are that's probably like a mole or something. And I don't really want to get rid of that. So skin lighting and coloring. Let's see. I have it cranked all the way down just cause, let's see. Now with lighting, I usually tend to zoom out a little bit. You can also do fixed lighting here if they're getting a little bit of shadows under the eyes. Mm, let's bring it down. I do tend to find that with the uh, the lighting, it can also create more of like a a shady, or not shady, a soft kind of look here. So let's see, uh, we're going to bring the contrast down just a little bit. And also with uh, skin tone, going to go natural, bring it up just a little. And then also I found that if the brightness contrast slider is up, that can really uh, create sort of like a washed out kind of look. So just 
keep an eye on that. Uh, for tan, let's see, for this guy here, we're gonna just go up just a little bit, not too much. All right, and then I wanna fix uh, this area here, the shadows under the eyes. So around eyes, we're gonna go lighten a little bit, and then we're gonna smooth just a tad, smooth crow's feet just a little bit. Now keeping in mind, this is a younger guy, so I'm not too concerned with it. Really what I'm looking more for here is getting rid of all the imperfections and stuff. So let's see, maybe touch up that area a little bit more. All right, and then we're gonna zoom back in here. Texture is looking okay, it looks like the maximum sensitivity was a little too high, so we're gonna go medium. And then also for the view edit skin mask, um, this is one of the improvements I found is a heck of a lot more accurate than it used to be and a lot faster um, was applying the skin mask. So uh, facial hair, sometimes you kind of have to go through and just double check like some of the softer areas and whatnot. But um, this was definitely a lot faster going from version 17 to version 18. A lot of the stuff under the hood is a lot faster than it used to be. And also um, I find just, again, it's faster, it's it's more accurate. So let's see here, let me go down, make him just a little bit more tan, just a bit. There we go. Uh, let's just make it five. Okay. Again, I always zoom all the way back out looking better. There's just something just a little bit, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there we go. Up just a little bit more. Now, again, it looks a little bit softer, so um, I might increase the sharpening just a little bit. That seems better. Again, going into one to one, just so you guys can see here, we still got texture. Still got, you know, some grain here and everything. So if you're unsure, always go back and just look at it one to one because sometimes the preview can be a little bit softer than what it actually is going to be. And then also teeth whitening. So we're going to go down to mouth and nose. Let's see, whiten teeth. We're going to go up a little bit more. Clean teeth. You can always just use the main slider uh, for me personally. I kind of go, you know, uh, individual sliders and stuff. But the other thing too is you don't want to go too bright with the teeth. Otherwise you start to get that kind of twilight effect. So, um, and then I'm going to touch up this one birthmark on the side of his face just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. All right. So overall, for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, let me try one more time with these red spots here. I'm going to just go up all the way here. And there we go. Not bad. Okay. So um, that's pretty much what I've got for now. Uh, so what you'll do once you're done with this is go back to uh, go to next. Click on return from plugin because some of you guys have had um, issues uh, trying to figure out, you know, how to export or, you know, open it from Photoshop into Portrait Pro and then bringing it back into Photoshop once it's done, just click on that next button and then click return to plugin. So, and then you can always just double check doing it like this. So, wow, big, big, big difference. Well, hopefully that'll give you guys a better idea as to whether or not you feel like you should upgrade from 17 to 18. Me personally, I find that because it works a whole lot faster and it's a lot more accurate, it definitely speeds up my workflow. So that for me was kind of a no brainer. Um, but for those of you guys that may not use the software as much, you know, maybe 17 works better for you. But overall, I do feel like going from 17 to 18 
um, overall was just a much faster, more accurate, you know, experience. So it was one of those things where I was like, yep, you know, I got to do it. So anyways, I hope that some of the features and the performance that you guys were able to see in the demo today uh, gave you a better idea. Just again, as a reminder, there goes somebody in the background. <laughs> As a reminder, um, none of the video that I edited today was cut for time. So as you were able to see in the video, that was how fast the software worked in real time. So anyways, if you guys do decide that you want to upgrade or if you're looking to buy the full version outright, then make sure to use the code DUSTIN10, all caps. It'll get you 10% off when you purchase. And other than that, Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Also, if you learned something today, do us a favor and hit the like button. And if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when new videos roll out. And there's also that little bell icon right next to the sub button. So that way you guys are given alerts and notifications whenever we have new videos coming on out for you. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Dustin Meyer and I will see you in the next video.